welcome today and hopefully we can get uh, your gardening or landscape question answered today uh, and this is a good opportunity uh, fall is just around the corner for us to learn a little bit all together listen and learn and hopefully get some of these questions answered uh, that is my email address there we'll show it again at the end and we'll go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, Ruby or Denise, whoever's going to moderate, we're ready. Thank you. Okay, thanks, David. This is Ruby. I can go ahead and read aloud any questions uh, that anyone in the chat box right now. We don't have any questions. And so, uh, uh, every, guys, everyone, please feel free to uh, type in your questions in the chat box. and. Uh, we can go ahead and get those asked to Mr. Rodriguez. David, while we're waiting, do you want to? Yeah, uh, yeah I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll go ahead and cover a, a couple topics here while people are chatting in uh, for today's live garden uh, chat. So we're just uh, uh, coming off the Labor Day uh, weekend. And uh, going, uh, August is over with, July, August, early to mid-September is traditionally the hottest months of the year. Uh, some of y'all have been seeing a little bit cooler temperatures, especially nighttime temperatures. And, and God willing, everyone received a little bit rainfall the last few days or even this morning. So this last, uh, this weekend, we just finished with Labor Day is traditionally the kickoff uh, uh, for fall planting. So if you've seen the nurseries and garden centers, a lot of them have been bringing in their uh, chrysanthemums or fall garden moms, their uh, fall asters. And uh, we're, uh, this is prime time right now to put seasonal uh, fall zinnia transplants in, as well as the large blooming merry mums, the fall marigolds. Uh, both of those, uh, which are both Texas Superstar plants, will give you plenty of color um, uh, from Halloween to Thanksgiving up to the first frost. But, you know, our bonus uh, question that we can cover now while Ruby's getting these questions chatted to her uh, for today is fall is for planting. You know, third week or so of September is uh, official date for fall. So this past weekend is the kickoff for fall planting uh, from, uh, from now uh, through about early November. Um, you'll find a, a lot of good deals at the nurseries and garden center, but our soils typically in and around central and south Texas uh, and most of the state uh, typically don't freeze. So if you're if you have spent some time preparing the area uh, for planting, um, let's take advantage of fall is for planting. Great, great time to get trees, shrubs, hardy perennials, uh, seasonal vegetables, seasonal annuals, pretty much everything. Uh, plant it uh, from now through early November. Take advantage of this. You know, the nighttime and daytime temperatures will be cooling off. Uh, days will become shorter, temperatures uh, uh, much cooler, and well spread out rainfall. And so we're not looking for really plants to really grow in the late fall or winter months, but we're really taking advantage of the opportunity of the temperatures and weather to get these plants established. So fall is for planting, you know, everybody wants to plant in the springtime. So if we can get a lot, uh, you know, we've thought out where we're gonna plant that tree, that shrub, that perennial, how to amend the soil. We're working with a Texas certified nursery professional for the right plant in the right location. Uh, taking advantage of, of uh, sourcing and planting a lot of good Texas superstar plants. But this is the ideal time uh, to plant these because uh, we get a jump ahead of spring, you might say, and hunker these plants down 
before the summer heat. And we all know how this summer is. We've we lived through it every mid-June through now. So take advantage and fall this for planting. Uh, where are we at with some questions, Ruby? Okay, let's go ahead and, and ask our first question from Marsha. She would like to know when is the best time to plant spinach and lettuce? Okay, so spinach and lettuce uh, are classified with your leafy green uh, type plants. Um, leaf lettuce or bunch type uh, lettuces, you can direct seed. Um, the challenge with lettuce seed is you almost have to plant it uh, right on top of a well-prepared planting bed. That means uh, you've incorporated your compost into the bed. You've incorporated your pre-plant granulated fertilizer into the bed as you would do most of your spring and fall um, vegetable plantings, those two steps. A very clean area, weed free of course, no coarse material. And lettuce, you don't really plant lettuce seed you sow it directly on top of this well-prepared seed bed and you pre-irrigate, you really have a good amount of moisture out there and you flick or you put your seed directly on the bed, the soil. You do not plant lettuce seed. You do not water it afterwards uh, because you'll cover it with soil. So planting it direct on the soil with pre-moistened soil, that pre-moistened soil brings the seed down a little bit. The sunlight, the UV lights will germinate that seed within three to seven days. Then once the seed germinates, then you proceed by watering it uh, without that much water pressure on those little plantlets that have germinated, okay? Uh, very unique on how you plant lettuce seed. We have a lot of information on planting lettuce seed on the plantanswers.com uh, website. You might study up a little bit on the Crawford reseeding lettuce, a lot of deep history here locally in San Antonio, and it will give you more illustrations and information on not only planting Crawford reseeding lettuce and use that for lettuce in general, uh, but also how to collect the seed towards uh, uh, next spring as an heirloom variety, because Crawford reseeding lettuce. So you might check with some of your local independent nurseries if you know where to buy your milk and your beer and your eggs and your lumber and your paint. You know, we know the Phoenix Garden Center and the Millburgers Landscape Nursery, just to name the two uh, of the great ones we have locally. But uh, See if they have any Crawford receding lettuce and try that with your lettuce uh, 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 that you decide on. But let's wait. Uh, we need the soil and we need night and daytime temperature to be much cooler uh, for lettuce and seed. So you usually we start around mid to late October and heaviest from November through about early February, both on lettuce and um, uh, spinach. And uh, spinach, often people plant too early and, and uh, too deep. So look for what we call a semi savoy, which is a semi curl leaf, crunchy leaf, curl leaf uh, spinach. Uh, you'll find transplants usually about the time of, of uh, seeding as well uh, as early as late October, November-ish through usually January. Good question. Okay, our next question comes from Wayne Gardner. He wants to know when is the best time to plant grapevines in San Antonio? Well, the nurseries, particularly the uh, independents that we mentioned, Fanix, Mailburgers, and the others in and around our area, have done a much, much better job in taking advantage of fall is for planting. So they bring in a, a, a good amount of fresh inventory. They bring in heavy loads of shade trees. And they're doing a much, much better job of fruit trees and berries 
and grapes, especially for the fall season. So um, if you can find the variety of grapes uh, for the fall and get them planted as soon as you can find them. And traditionally the heaviest inventory for the nurseries when it comes to fruit and berry and grapes is typically January through March. So any, any time during that time frame um, is, is appropriate. Uh, hopefully you'll try the Texas Superstar grape called Victoria Red, which the large reddish uh, clusters of about 1.5 pounds. Um, they're semi seedless. Uh, they have uh, Pierce's disease resistance. And without a doubt for the home gardener, having that Pierce's disease, we would say for sure 100% at this time, it's probably the best table grape that a home gardener can grow. Uh, you can look at Lenoir, which we refer to as Black Spanish, a small clusters of black uh, grapes. Uh, Blanc de Bois, another good great one for the home gardener. And of course, the old Champanelle, large purple grape. All of those having Pierce's disease is the key. Uh, not only commercially, but most importantly for home gardeners. More information on grape culture can be found on the fruit tree section of Aggie Horticulture. So research it more, but here all the way till uh, January, February is great planting time and hopefully good availability uh, at your local independent nursery. Good question. Okay, our next question comes from Laura from San Antonio. Uh, she wants to know about dividing bulbs. What is the best time and the best temperatures? Okay, so a good rule. If it's a spring blooming bulb, uh, be it German bearded irises, uh, cannas, uh, day lilies, uh, just to mention a few. Fall would be the time to consider um, dividing uh, spring blooming bulbs. So I would wait and be a little bit patient so around um, mid to late October through November, December uh, would be a good time. So if your bed is not performing, it's just, uh, you know, it gets plenty of sun, but they're just so full in there and the plants are basically choking themselves out. Uh, get in there with a pitchfork, uh, find the main crown areas of these plants and go on the outskirts and beyond and deep dig with a pitchfork and just basically um, uh, move up, dig out these clumps, uh, separate them. The biggest clump or biggest root part, clump part, crown part, we would keep and divide the other ones and reset, replant in the in the same area, space them out accordingly. You know, loosen up that existing soil that's there, particularly the heavy clay that a lot of us have to work with. Uh, loosen it up the best you can, and you know, move in the rule of, rule of thumb is twenty percent high grade finished compost. Uh, work that in um, and reset. Uh, and cut the leaves accordingly. If they die back after you plant, then you can remove more dead debris. And then share with your friends and family or repot a few of the leftover clumps that you divide in appropriate size containers or get or replant a ASAP as not to expose the roots too long in the new homes in your landscape or cover them with wet burlap or moist paper, and then share them with your friends and family, otherwise upgrade in the appropriate size containers with a real high grade premium potting mix that's peat based and pre-moistened uh, with a little bit of slow release container fertilizer such as Osmocote uh, 18612, and then grow a plant that's ready to be shared or planted uh, next spring and summer of next year. Good question. Okay, thank you. Our next question comes from Lynn. Um, I'd like to know uh, how 
can they get rid of blue stem in their hay field in Natalia, Texas? Oh, uh, they only use organic fertilizer and no chemicals. Yeah, that might be an agriculture related question over a gardening and landscape question. So I would do some searches on the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension uh, websites. Uh, they're not going to have a lot of organic options because uh, a lot of these, there's really no true good organic herbicides out there. So organic would be uh, uh, grubbing it out, uh, pulling it out, um, moving your animals or, along uh, to build up their organic matter after they finish feeding, possibly uh, mowing, mowing, and just uh, high rates of nutrition with the grasses of choice and your native grasses possibly to choke out any weed issues that you have. Otherwise, um, contact your um, local county uh, agriculture agent that does a lot of field trials, but uh, in regards to organic options on such weed issues like that, there's none. Next question, please. Okay, the next question comes from Candy from San Antonio. Is it too late to plant bush green beans? No, not at all. Um, uh, I would, uh, I probably started my first wave of bush beans. And I remember in the fall, when it comes to uh, bush green beans, you, you can also do yellow and purple, which do much, much better in the fall. Um, then the spring, I don't really do pole in the fall, but more in the spring because of the longer growing season. Plus with bush type beans, you're going to have much, much more um, uh, um, um, harvest with, from the amount of square foot uh, that you plant. So um, if you haven't planted uh, your warm weather bush beans, I would get them in the ground yesterday or ASA. A pea on a well prepared, uh, pre, uh, pre prepared planting uh, zone area, weed free, organically enriched, uh, fertilized with pre plant granulated fertilizer. And to get them even going quicker, I would pre soak these beans since you're planting a little bit later, um, about half an hour to an hour, uh, pre soak them in water. You might see the radical come out of that bean seed and then directly uh, plant them. If you, you want to go even a better step, if you have any uh, bean soil inoculant, uh, rhizobium, nitrobacterium, uh, particularly with legumes, if you've never planted in that area, you can buy, purchase it from Johnny Select Seeds. So after you pre-soak your beans and get them out and put them in a five pound paper bag with this nitrobacterium and it looks like black uh, graphite, graphite basically. And then you basically uh, direct seed uh, at the right spacing and the right depth in your garden. Good question. Okay, next question comes from Kathy. Uh, do earwigs eat new plants? If they do, how do you get rid of them? Um, earwigs aren't really a problem. Just don't get them in your ears when you're asleep at uh, night. That's their nickname. And uh, that's an old wife's tale, of course. Um, roly polies might do more damage to new seedlings or new young vegetative plants that have uh, foliage close to the soil line, but they really don't kill the plants. Uh, let's just live with them. They're part of the decaying material more than anything else. So just live with them. They're really not bad for your plants. Good question. Okay, the next question comes from, comes from Mariela uh, from San Antonio. Um, she says, I had squash vine borrowers attack my zucchini and yellow crookneck squash this spring. Do I need to treat the soil or avoid planting anything in the same spot? Uh, she uses containers and raised beds. 
Okay, good question. And uh, you know, um, commercial farmers that grow squash and zucchini and other cucurbits uh, like that have very few issues with um, squash vine borer. And basically the female uh, mo uh, butterfly moth uh, looks almost like a almost like a wasp and your shadow since your shadow is the best um, person in your garden often when you're out there uh, early in the mornings especially when it's cool you'll be amazed that you'll see the female basically hunker down on bean plants or things like that because it's still a little bit too much morning dew and a little bit too cool in the morning before she takes off in flight. So if you want to be super duper organic, uh, use the two hand approach and, and smash them. Otherwise have a, a bottle of a fresh liquid spinosad or a mild horticulture grade insecticidal soap ready. You can spray them right then and there. So it's amazing that you take care of a lot of them. And of course, for insect management, we keep the outskirts uh, clean, your alleys and places like that mowed down. And of course, in and around your garden and landscape, we minimize weed pressure, which brings in insects and disease. Um, if you plant uh, quite a bit of seeds, um, plant real tight, plant a lot of seeds. Uh, we're not trained to do that. We always say space, 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 but we'll make a rare exception of squash and zucchini when you direct seed and plant quite a bit of them much closer. And when they come up and the leaves start touching, that that female squash vine borer caterpillar uh, moth butterfly tends to be confused and, and doesn't directly go to the stems and lay her eggs often. So that will help quite a bit. Then you start thinning out your plants. So you have adequate um, spacing either with loppers, you just cut them at the ground. Uh, that's another option or, and or immediately start um, inoculating your plants heavily at the, at the stem part, heavily at the stem part by um, every three days, initially when they germinate from the ground uh, with every three days spinosad, fresh spinosad sprayed in the afternoon and the evening are f and or alternating uh, with fresh liquid bacillus thuringiensis BT. Both of these are approved for organic production farming and the uh, key is fresh. Uh, we always read and follow label instructions applying them at the stem and do that for a couple alternate, every three days alternating, do it at least two springs of each. The insulate, the grow web, the winter protection fabric that we do in uh, late February, early, uh, the month of March for early plantings of tomatoes also works as a good insect barrier. So you may, might, might make some like little Kwanzas, little hoops you put that um, over these plants or, uh, or late plantings during the winter for lettuce and other cool weather crops that germinate from the ground from frost. But these work excellent as a, an insect bearer. Uh, it lets the light in there and keeps the wind from pounding on your plants, but it keeps the insects out. So uh, cucurbits like squash, zucchini, cucumbers, and melons, the male flower comes out first. Uh, which has the pollen, the bee or the pollinating insect needs to move the pollen at least seven times to the female. So once the flowers start initiating, then we would for sure early in the morning take those off. So you do have a few options. No, they do not overwinter uh, in the soil. You can have from one to three generations a year or more. And we're starting to see different strains of these uh, squash vine borers come in. So uh, that's some ways to approach it. If you keep your plants very healthy, well watered, well fertilized, excellent air circulation, good spacing once they've uh, started to grow, um, watering them correctly, not getting the leaves wet, of course, spraying them with chlorothalonol fungicide. If we have high humidity or uh, right after a significant rain event and keeping the overall health of the plant 
They might have these squash vine pores towards the end, but you've had such a bountiful amount of production on them that even your friends and neighbors are locking their doors and gates because they're tired of you bringing so much over. So just kind of follow those guidelines. Good question. Okay, our next question comes from Marsha. Um, she asks, what would you say is more successful planting a lime tree? Planting it in a container or planting it in the ground? Okay, so your homework, so your homework assignment on citrus is please go to our uh, My Extension 210 uh, YouTube channel. Ruby will have this webinar as she does the other ones within a week's time, but we have all these archived there on the My Extension 210 One Word YouTube channel, and please subscribe to it as well and uh, share it with your friends and family, help us get the word out. But we have an excellent, excellent, excellent uh, citrus webinar uh, that we have, and we cover in depth uh, both patio and landscape citrus. Uh, lemons and especially limes are the most cold sensitive of all the citrus. So we really don't recommend uh, growing limes in the landscape. And of course, there's a few exceptions in microclimates and in the inner uh, areas of 410, the coastline, and then south going into the valley. But for most homeowners, we, we say all citrus for a minimum of three years in containers. Lemons and limes for sure I would keep in containers. And all that information more in depth is on the My Extension 210 YouTube channel of growing uh, citrus on the patio and landscape. Good question. Okay, thank you. Our next question comes from Rocio from San Antonio. Some tomatoes and a sedano pepper. Two of the tomato plants have died from the top down. Uh, she says that she stopped by the nursery and was told that due to, dem to demand that they have been getting plant material from another grower and in order to keep up with demand, they haven't been as careful with pest management. Uh, she says that the nurseryman said that um, he, 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 have, he has seen mosaic disease. Uh, any thoughts on what can be done? Yeah, well, we, we always want to start out with quality plants, not only tomatoes or peppers or any plants. You know, quality is very, very important learning about that plant, where it's gonna be planted, and a game plan of how to properly plant it. You know, we always follow the four Ps of, of uh, plants in general for our garden and landscape. You know, you plan, you purchase high quality seeds and transplants or plants in general, and you prepare the area properly, and then, then you purchase, then you plant and maintain. You know, that's the challenge. You know, we always buy on impulse. So quality control. So if it truly is a virus, and that just shows to you that there's no organic growers of vegetables in the state. There's none, folks. Uh, now, just because they're traditional or conventional, they practice good practices. And of course, minimize uh, spraying the best they can and using the most appropriate and at times organic products. But there's no true certified organic uh, grower in the state. I think there's only one in Georgetown, which is a very, very small uh, grower. But that says a lot right there in that statement. They have to spray, but they, they're, they, they're good stewards and use the right products. If you have a virus, there's about three uh, virus strains uh, that typically uh, come uh, in tomatoes, uh, which are vectored by either thrips or white fly, maybe aphids, uh, but you usually don't see that symptom early. Uh, you see it use it on spring going into summer, but fresh plants for fall, we should not be seeing that symptom early. It might be something else that they're misdiagnosing as a virus. 
And uh, by the way, folks, hydrogen peroxide, uh, there's a lot of nonsense out there and very few people are talking about it when they first did about a year or two, you hear very little bit about it now. It doesn't work, folks. You cannot get rid of a virus in a plant. You might dye your hair with it, I think, right, ladies? Uh, with hydrogen peroxide or brush your teeth with it, but you cannot get rid of viruses on plants. It's nonsense. And, and uh, so um, you might do some light trimming back on it, kick up the nutrition, the mulching, of course, good weed management. Otherwise, if it's too stressed, uh, you know, you might want to see if the nurses have any real good quality gallon tomatoes for late in the game and see, see how they'll produce this fall. Good question. Okay, our next question comes from Mariela from San Antonio. Uh, she says that one of her raised beds has little black ants. They don't bite, they're fast, and they swarm whenever uh, she waters, digs, or weeds. They, um, she said that they're annoying, but they don't bother her. Uh, do they uh, pose any harm to the plants? Yeah, if they're not bothering you and they look like they're not doing any damage, you know, that's um, God's nature of all the beauty and unique things that we can see on a daily basis from the moon to the sun to the stars and the skies and the little animals and creatures and critters that are out there. So enjoy them, uh, maybe dance with them and be entertained. If they're not hurting you or your plants, let's just leave them alone. Okay, that looked to be like our last question in the chat. Um, just a reminder, if you do have a question, please feel free to put it in there and uh, we can go ahead and get that asked for you. Um, David, is there anything else you would like to share with us? Yeah, by showing this slide, you know, not knowing how many people are participating with questions, we always say a one gardening question because we want to try to get everyone um, involved and answer. But if you have any others, don't hesitate. We still have a, a few minutes or we can uh, cut it short. I'm getting hungry for lunch, but go ahead and chat. Uh, chat them in. So we did talk about fall is for planting. So a couple other things uh, to remember coming out of the heat of August, this is a good time frame. If you did not do it this past weekend to replenish your organic mulch uh, and everything, you know, your, your fall vegetable garden that you're planting, get a, a two, 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 two inch layer. Uh, two inches away minimum from the crown of the year, twice a year. So this is the second wave, the best wave of mulch, 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 everything. Your trees, your shrubs, your flower beds, everything. I prefer a double shredded hardwood mulch uh, with compost, which we refer to a living mulch. Uh, if you want to really help retain moisture and cut back your water, and that's why we do the first wave around April, May, early June at the latest before you go into the summer heat. It not only regulates soil temperature when it's 106 out there underneath the mulch layer that conserves water and cuts back on your water, uh, it's about 80 degrees. So it builds the soil, looks pretty, but um, most of us don't have a lot of organic material in the soil. That's why we incorporate compost when we plant. And we use the twice a year mulching to uh, help build the soil. So that's another thing. And right now is the most important time if you want to go the organic natural option of fertilizing everything with a good organic uh, natural based fertilizer, be it either alfalfa or, or a chicken manure base. This is prime, prime time to fertilize everything as well. So fertilize first, put the mulch down, seal that bag of fertilizer what's left over and water it all in thoroughly. And uh, we're set. Okay, it looks like we have another question in the chat box um, from Lynn from Wilkerson, Lynn Wilkerson from San Antonio. Uh, what advice do you have for companion planting for vegetables? Yeah, let me get a real quick drink of water and let me answer that real quick. I really like, I really don't like that word companion planting. 
most of that is northern information and that information is really obsolete for the south here because the varieties aren't compatible of what's uh, considered companion versus the vegetable we plant so i like sustainability or proper planting so we go with the list either on the bear county extension service website or plantanswers.com or and or aggie horticulture planting the right vegetables at the right time hopefully extension recommended varieties and then looking at all the videos that we have uh, archived on vegetable gardening both pest and vegetable garden i think we got three or four of each on the my extension 210 youtube channel so that's the key planting the right plants at the right time um, and then all the weed management fertility nutrition spacing air circulation sunlight okay and then really the companion is the right plants you know if it's time to plant basil you plant tomatoes etc cetera, etc cetera, with herbs you know we talked about the zinnias and the marigolds this is great time for your fall incorporate some of those into your vegetable garden as well so i don't like that term companion because that's northern information most of it's anecdotal a lot of not no good in-depth science uh, behind it and we always identify an insect disease or other make sure we identify it correctly and ask why why do i have this insect why do i have disease we spray accordingly we can use organic approved insecticides spinosad is very broad spectrum works very well bt especially for caterpillars if you're planting leafy greens and all your cold crops, including broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower in the next couple of weeks for September planting of healthy transplants like Green Magic Broccoli for Thanksgiving dinner or October, better yet, plantings for Christmas dinner, then you're going to have caterpillars, you know, so you're going to have to spray to keep these caterpillars, the cabbage loopers and other caterpillars out of there. So that's how we kind of approach that terminology of companion planning, particularly when it comes to vegetable production. Good question. Okay, our next question comes from Lily. Uh, effective is liquid sea seaweed for fertilizer? Well, okay, liquid seaweed is not a fertilizer. So uh, put an X on that. It's like compost. Compost is not a fertilizer. Compost is a soil amendment. So you need to still fertilize your plants. Liquid seaweed is not a fertilizer. So it's a, a plant uh, supplement. So it's not a fertilizer. So you still need uh, to fertilize uh, your plants. Um, if you use liquid seaweed, you wanna make sure of course, you know, all these products, particularly organic, have a very, very uh, short life uh, expectancy on the shelf. So you want fresh, you want liquid seaweed that's been harvested from cool waters, cold waters. And you, we always read and follow label instructions. You spray early, early, early in the morning, the foliage, and you do that uh, three applications once every three days when you first set out plants. And then you can do it every uh, 10 to 14 to 21 days. And what it does it hardens off the leaves, make it thicker. So when you water and fertilize, it just gives it that extra vitamin supplement. You might say, we eat healthy, we make right choices, we exercise, right? And plants are the same way. So that's how I would approach liquid seaweed. Okay, that looks like our last question in the chat. Uh, we can go ahead and wait a little bit more since we still have more time to see if anybody else has any questions. Yeah, otherwise we'll cut it short, but um, let me put a couple of things. That's my email address. So if you have any garden or landscape questions throughout the year, don't hesitate to send me an email. Send me small questions, not 10 pages, please. And if you need something identified, um, send questions.
quality images attached to the email and uh, it kind of helps us kind of identify what the what that plan is or insect disease issue etc cetera, etc cetera. you know i spent a lot of my days during the covid keeping me busy 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 answering lots and lots of emails but um, in between other things that we're trying to do uh, out there so don't hesitate to send me How do we look, Ruby? Okay, we uh, did get another question from Wayne Gardner. Okay. Um, what do you think about warm weather and cool weather cover crops in your vegetable garden? Oh, very good. If you have um, um, root knot nematode issues in your garden, vegetable garden, um, you have to ask why I have root knot uh, nematodes and basically the female worm in, uh, engulfs herself uh, on the rootlets that take up uh, moisture and nutrition. So a plant doesn't know if you're fertilizing uh, with a conventional or organic fertilizer. It's taken up through the same way through biology in the soil, the temperature, et cetera, moisture. Uh, so if you have that, you know, Elbon ryegrass, a cereal uh, type of a ryegrass, um, late October, uh, November-ish is the time you put that out. Of course, you're going to sacrifice a percentage of your garden because you're doing a winter uh, grass, basically, but make sure it's Elbon cereal ryegrass. You put it out at a rate of about one pound per 100, well, one pound per 50 to 100 square feet and it acts as a green manure crop. You mow it down a couple times or weed whack it down. And then when you finish it up going into the spring, you the key there is to work it into the soil. All these, I mean, all these uh, cover crops, you gotta work it into the soil, work it into the soil. So you're benefiting not only the roots, but also the green part into the soil as a green manure compost type. Uh, winter vetch is also another one to look at uh, for the winter, fall, winter time. And then in the late spring, summer, uh, one of the better ones is the southern peas as a legume. So you can use it as a uh, green bean, harvest the young green beans as an edible cash crop, or let the pods set and then you can eat them uh, harvest fresh or dry the seeds. So those are really some of the better ones that we have success growing here. Uh, Douglas King Seed Company, uh, been here in San Antonio next to Fanix Garden Center on the east side, so you can make two trips there. Uh, call Dean uh, at Douglas King if you live in and around the San Antonio area, and you can get the uh, uh, all those types and maybe try a few others. Good question. Okay, that looked like it was our last question in our in our chat box. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you, Ruby and Denise, for helping us out today. Uh, don't forget uh, if you got emails, uh, check us out at this email address here, please. Don't forget, fall is for planting. You know, we get excited. Uh, the nurseries are starting to, to fill up and bring good inventory in for fall planting. Not only vegetables, fruit trees, shade trees, uh, landscape plants. You know, let's take advantage of uh, the end of uh, the month of September going into November and, and plan. But think things out before we dig. Don't forget 811. If you're not sure what's underneath that ground, 811 besides rock and caliche. Uh, we don't want to uh, dig, dig in a root that's hard to break and find out it's an electric utility line. Of course, hopefully everyone's been using these three great websites. You know, Aggie Horticulture with the huge Texas A&M system is the most used website on the Texas A&M University system. So that says a lot that gardening is so popular. And, and of course, this year more people have been getting in 
Uh, rule of thumb, you know, mentor a child, get the kids involved, the grandkids involved. You know, they need to get their hands dirty. You know, the outdoor classroom, you can learn so, so much instead of just being set inside playing video games and being stuck watching that TV and computer all the time. You learn so much and it's good to learn how to, to nurture not only in uh, pets, but your garden. Uh, as well and a good way to get the kids involved and teach them a life skill that they never forget. You know, I like watching that junior master chef. You know, if we can grow and get them involved and sit the family down on Sunday. And remember, we used to do that, folks. Have a nice dinner, but from the garden to the harvest to preparation of a meal and sitting the family down, turn the TV off. Isn't that fun? Isn't that what we should be doing? And then, of course, my extension 210, one word, YouTube channel. Please subscribe to it, get the word out. Uh, a lot of great archive information there, and Ruby should have this one uh, archived uh, within the week. Or so. Thank you all for joining us today. Always learn and have fun. And uh, get out there and let's do some gardening this fall. Thank you, Ruby. Thank you, Denise. And thank you, everyone, for joining us.